Hello, we're Jeff and Sessie Haynes. We're here to talk to you about Judges chapter 4 and 5, the story of uh, Deborah, Barak, and Jael. Hi, I'm going to start. And I, you know, one of the things that um, caught my eye when I was reading is at the beginning of chapter 4 and verse 3, it says that Sisera tormented Israel for 20 years. Wow, 20 years, just imagine, where were you 20 years ago? You know, it's a long time. And after 20 years, they decide to cry out to God to deliver them. And my my thought is, why did they wait too long, that long to do it? And it's easy to judge them and criticize them, but in a way we are the same. You know, we are in the state of the world today. We um, can whine and can complain and can say, my goodness, you know, it's just the world is getting so bad and social media and all the attacks and all the things that we are facing. And uh, yeah, the, the world is going downhill fast. And, but I think that we need to stand and cry out to God and stand and, and call out his plan for us and his plan for the earth and you know what he what he has for us and just don't wait and just complain and, and see how bad things are going but instead just pray and kind of cry out to God about what he wants us to do at this time for such a time as this a couple of things that stood out to me we see in verse 3 that uh, Sisera had an army with 900 chariots that's kind of, in modern terms, that would be like a tank army um, because they were armored, they carried archers, they were mobile, they were fast, they were really hard to defeat and um, conquered pretty much everybody around them. Um, so that was a scary thing. And I think it's interesting, a lot of people give Barak a bad rap and say he, he was lacking faith. That's why he asked to have Deborah go with him. But uh, I'm not sure that the New Testament really supports that. In Hebrews 11, it talks about the Hall of Fame of Faith, and uh, it mentions him right in there, I think in verse 32. And um, so maybe a different way to look at it would be to say, you know, under the Old Covenant, they didn't have the Holy Spirit with them. They couldn't ask God for help and hear directly. They had to go to the priests at the tabernacle or find a prophet, or in Barak's case, a prophetess, Deborah. Um, so when she said, God is telling you to do this, he said, okay, I'll do it, but I need God's voice with me. And that's you, Deborah. Um, so I need you to go with me. And we see that in action. Um, I think it's verse um, 14. Deborah says to Barak, arise, now is the time. <clears throat> this is the day, go. It's time to go into battle. And he does, and there's this massive defeat. And we go, we don't really see why. Unless we take a look at chapter 5, where we see Deborah's song, and it says there, um, when you marched from Edom's field, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. So he's by the Kishon River, which is in a valley. It starts raining. Um, they wouldn't have gone to war with chariots if this was the rainy season. So it was the dry season, but God made it rain. And suddenly they're in the middle of a flash flood, and that tank army that looked so hard to defeat was either uh, pushed away by the by the flash flood or stuck in the mud, but they were sitting ducks and they were easy targets then for Barak and his army. And Sisera's army sees their tanks um, suddenly stuck and unavailable and they panic and run. And then Sisera has to run away as well. And of course we know what happens to him when he's when he goes and looks for a place of refuge. And, you know, here's where I come in, you know, to talk about Jael. Jael was, you know, her husband had called her, or not called her, but moved her to a place where they were by themselves. It wasn't a place where they had to be, you know, they were in isolation. And she knew what needed to happen. So when she saw the opportunity and Cicera went to... Uh, to her, to her in, in order to uh, be delivered, or not delivered, but be rescued, uh, she uh, sees the opportunity with what she had at hand. You know, the tin pegs and hammers were household items, and she used what she had at hand in the moment, even though she could have feel that she was out of place, that she was completely isolated and without anything for her, she uh, seized what she had. And and took, took his life, and the victory came for the Israelites after that. 
So don't think that uh, wherever you are is not a good place or you don't have what it takes or you don't have what is needed. You do. You do. God has placed us, all of us, uh, for such a time as this, you know, wherever we are, where, you know, we just need to open our eyes and be obedient. So thank you very much. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Bye.